breaking news this hour. Matt Gates is stepping down from his nomination to Attorney General of the United States. Many said this was the most contentious of the nominations made by former President Trump. And he has announced categorically that he will not be seeking confirmation to the post of Attorney General. <laughs> well, there you go. Man, oh man, the deep state are not going down without a fight. No, no, no. Today we got a disheartening message from Matt Gates, and he put out a statement saying that he's going to withdraw his consideration to become Trump's attorney general. Here are his words. I had excellent meeting with senators yesterday. I appreciate their thoughtful feedback and the incredible support of so many. While the momentum was strong, it is clear that my confirmation was unfairly becoming a distraction to the critical work of the Trump fans transition. There's no time to waste on a needlessly protracted Washington scuffle. Thus, I'll be withdrawing my name from consideration to serve as attorney general. Trump's DOJ must be in place and ready on day one. I remain fully committed to seeing that Donald J. Trump is the most successful president in history. Now, I know a lot of people from the MAGA side are kind of upset about this. They're kind of sad because, again, we let the deep state win with the old playbook, sex. Yeah, they use that playbook again against Matt Gates, even though Joe Biden's DOJ tried to use this against him three years ago. DOJ leaked that he was a child sex trafficker. So at that point, they have a moral, I would say, legal obligation to charge them for child sex trafficking and prove it in court. And if they can't, shut the F up. But they didn't do that. They leaked that Matt Gates, a guy they didn't like, whose views were a threat to them, is a child sex trafficker. Then they just let it hang in the air and all their repulsive little minions like Joe Scarborough, like, he's a child sex trafficker. Really? You want to live in a world where the secret police can just yeah. slander you through the media? I read in my Bible this morning that you don't believe something unless two or three people are witnesses and say, and there is none of that. In fact, the weaponized Department of Justice said we don't have the proof to pursue these allegations. I know! They accuse it, they, they make the case, and then they say it should be known that Matt Gates denies that these allegations has occurred. Of course he denies it because they're not true in the Department of Justice. There's no accounting of the fact that these things have been proven not to be, not to be true. So the DOJ did not have any credible witness to pursue with this case. So they kind of dropped it. But three years down later, they are still going to try to use the same playbook. Because, again, for a man, a man could do all his hard work and just the implication, just the accusation from somebody can ruin somebody's career. It happens so many times to the men. You know what's scary as a man? As a man, you can spend your entire life trying to build your reputation, just trying to make something out of yourself. And in a single moment, someone can falsely accuse you of sexual assault or sexual misbehavior or simply being a toxic man and boom, reputation tarnished forever. In fact, the person who's making the accusations doesn't even need to be credible. They can be anonymous and still damage your reputation this way. It's as if this has become a rite of passage, as if once you reach a certain level of status as a man, this will happen to you. And even if you're legally exonerated, we have a culture of guilty until proven innocent, so it doesn't actually matter. I've been looking at this case of Matt Gates, Trump's nominee for attorney general. The man was investigated for three years by the Department of Justice. They ultimately dropped the charges, the allegations that he had sex with a minor. And it turns out that the primary witnesses in this case were liars. One of them was a man who had a history of accusing his political opponents of having sex with minors, while he himself was having sex with minors. The other was a woman who, when she was age 17, would go on Sugar Baby websites and lie about her age. I think it was really important that we had the Me Too movement so that women who are legitimately victims of sexual assault to speak up. But you know who gets persecuted as well? Men too. Now, what's funny to me is, Mary Garland, the current AG from the Biden administration, when he went up to be the attorney general, we had 20 Republicans voted for him. 20 out of 46 voted for Mary Garland to become the AG. 
Matt Gates is the right guy for attorney general. Do he you, is a true constitutionalist. Well, do you think he's going to get confirmed? Uh, I think he will. Uh, I mean, if senators can vote for Merrick Garland, I mean, a guy who absolutely decimated the Constitution, uh, I think they can certainly vote for Matt Gates as someone who will absolutely uphold the Constitution. So that was a bipartisan decision to put Merrick Garland in. 20 Republicans cross over and voted for Merrick Garland to become the AG. Now, even though the Republicans have won the House and the Senate, they control both houses. They're still playing the Democrats' game. Now, it took 20 Republicans to vote Mary Garland in. No problem. But right now, with Matt Gates coming on, we had four Republicans say they're not going to vote for Matt Gates. Mikowski, Susan Collins, you know Mayor Romney was not going to do it, and Mitch McConnell, that piece of shit right there, those four right there already said they're not going to vote them in. I was shocked by the nomination, uh, given the many allegations, but that's why it's important that the Senate go through its process of making sure that we have a background check, that we have a Senate investigation, which involves extensive interviews and questionnaires, and then a public hearing. So we kind of put a pressure on Matt Gates to go down because they don't have the support of the Republicans. Unlike the Democrats, all of them voted for Mary Garland alongside 20 Republicans. You see the unfairness? We never stick together. Republicans never stick together. And it's all because of Mitch McConnell. The new Senate Majority Leader, uh, Thune, he's another one. He's, he's Mitch McConnell's homeboy. So he, too, is not going to vote him in. And um, the dude from Texas, they were not going to vote to put him in. So it was going to be hard for Matt Gates to go through anyway. Even though Trump had a little Trump card, no pun intended, he could have pushed him through during the recess. Up. Article 2, Section 3 of the United States Constitution, I told you Trump wasn't playing, gives a president a number of powers and responsibility, including adjourning Congress. The president can adjourn Congress if the two houses can't agree on when to adjourn. However, no president has ever exercised this power. And if he adjourns Congress and Congress is in recess, he can appoint whoever he feels like appointing whenever he feels like appointing them, and they can bypass Congress. You ready for this, folks? Let's get into it. Recess appointments. The Constitution allows the president to make temporary appointments during periods when the Senate is in recess. According to Article 2, Section 2, Clause 3, these appointments can be made without Senate confirmation, but they expire at the end of the next session of Congress, which is the end of 2026, by the way, unless confirmed by the Senate in the meantime. By adjourning Congress, if there is a disagreement on the adjournment timing between the House and the Senate, Trump, right here, folks, can appoint cabinet members members without the usual Senate confirmation process, meaning that if Mike Johnson says, I think we should adjourn, and the Senate says, no, I don't think we should, then Donald Trump can say, I'm adjourning both of you. Go home right now. There's no need for you right now. And in that time, he can ad he can put anybody that he wants in there, anybody that he wants until the end of 2026. What are you going to do then? But there's going to be a whole bunch of, bunch of talking and, you know, the media is going to go all crazy because Trump would have put him in without going through the process. But it's okay. The next guy that he's going to put up, I hope he's going to be just a bulldog like Matt Gates is, and I don't want to hear it. Pam Bondi is exactly what I was saying in the last segment that we should all fear, because she's competent. We may not agree with her ideologically, but she actually knows how to do this job. So if anyone on the Democratic side or anyone who cared about liberty or justice was thinking, well, maybe Matt Gates will screw this up and that'll give us some time. No, Pam Bondi knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing about immigration. Remember, Florida is one of those states that's been very aggressive about migrants and deportation and moving people to different states and everything else like that. Florida has enacted all sorts of rules and laws to uh, to curtail students and, and what they can do on campuses and, and, and finding legal justifications for manipulating education money. She is a dangerous and effective pick, and that's frankly worse than what we would have got with Matt Gates, even with the deplorable moral background that he has. And like I said this before, we need to protect this man at all costs. Let's go.